After meeting Brian Layton, one could describe him as an unstoppable force. He's served our nation in the military, and he's worked almost every job imaginable in the construction industry. My history is construction. Uh, after the Marine Corps, I started working in heavy construction. Even before, I worked for my father. He was a union carpenter. The longer I've done it, I found my body deteriorating all the time. So what I would do is I used to uh, try to figure a way that I could get into the industry and keep on working. So I opened a hearth shop in uh, Connecticut and I sold Harmon stoves and all kinds of wood stoves and pellet stoves and you know whatever coal stoves and I used to install them. And that was one thing that I, I was I had to sell the business because I was too stubborn. I kept on working and lifting a 400 pound stove wasn't good to do when you had a bad back. Brian can no longer ignore the pain from years of his physically demanding career. Over the years, I was really having a, starting to get a lot of back pain. So I went to chiropractors and everything else. Now it wasn't until probably about 90 that I had my first back operation. My wife could probably tell you exactly when it was. My name is Gail Layton. My best friend fixed me up with him years ago. Actually, my best friend wanted to fix him up with my baby sister. And I'd heard what an, uh, horror stories of him in the, in the Marines. And I'd said, there's no way you're fixing that animal up with my baby sister. I'll take him. <laughs> We've been married 40 years. In 1999, he had a, a spinal decompression. Turned out that at the time of that decompression, they actually made his spine unstable. They took too much of the bone out. So because he's a big man, he, was, he started having problems after that. I went to several doctors. I went back to the same doctor. And he said, oh, there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. You're too heavy, you're too, you know, big, and, you know, we just can't do anything, you know. So I ended up finding another doctor in Connecticut that actually was willing to operate on me, and he looked at the x-rays and the MRI. He said, oh my God, I didn't do this, did I? And I said, no, it was actually another doctor. And he said, phew, you know, that made me feel very confident about this. But then back in um, 2006, he finally went through the um, spinal fusion, which was a massive surgery. He was on the table for hours and hours and hours, 13 hours. It was just exhausting. So he ended up going in there and the other doctor made my spine very weak. So he went in there and he cleaned out the spots, but he put six screws in there, three on each side, and he put bars in between, uh, you know, linking the three screws together to help support me. Well, over the years, that actually worked a way in. It was pinching off some nerves and you know, God knows what. And so I, I was in steady pain constantly. And I had to work, walk with a cane because what they did is in one of the operations, somehow they did something where I couldn't push down on my toes and my feet. So I just kept on, when I leaned forward, that was it. I was done. You had to pick me up off the floor. So I went with the cane just to balance for, I've been with the cane for probably eight, 10 years now. and. I just, you know, I was at wit's end when I got down here. Uh, I totally gave up. I, after the back operation, I actually went in and had my stomach stapled. I used to be almost 400 pounds at one time. And I went all the way from 400 pounds to like 250. And even then I went back to the doctors because that was their thing. You're too heavy, you're too big. I went back to the doctors and they said, nothing we could do for you, you're too big. The pain in my back was actually went right down my whole spine into my tailbone. Uh, my shoulders were actually felt like they were on fire and my the joints in my shoulders were so sore that I could barely you know move my arms without any pain and that's why I had to be on oxycodone. As I walked as I moved I'd get shooting pains down my legs almost like lightning rods going down my legs and then through my back. It got towards the end that I had burning from my tailbone all the way around my waist and right into the crotch where I was numb. So it was a case that I had no life whatsoever. And when I came down here, I, uh, I was just, you know, convinced that within a year's time I'd be in a wheelchair. And to see him deteriorate um, to the point where he, he was just absolutely hopeless. He figured this was going to be the rest of his life. Um, and he'd been told by doctors that there was, there was nothing they could do for him. He was um, just really resigned to probably being in a, in a wheelchair. So it was really painful to see him. Um, I think there's nothing worse than to love somebody and to see them being in that kind of pain and not being able to do anything for them. 
And particularly when they get to the point where you're just, um, he was just absolutely hopeless. He thought he'd been told so many times that there was nothing that he would have to live like that. As they had exhausted all hope in their home state of Connecticut, Gail, determined to find help for her husband, searched online for an alternative option near their winter home in Central Florida. She discovered the Bonatti Spine Institute. I was shocked because when my wife called the Bonatti Institute, uh, the uh, set up the appointment and everything else, Dr. Bonatti himself called back and talked to me. And I mean, I never, I know the other doctors, I knew them personally, and they would never call me for any reason to find out how I was doing or anything else. Uh, so when Dr. Bonatti himself called me, you know, I was like, I couldn't believe this. I mean, a doctor's taking his time out to call me. I was shocked. And he talked and he told me exactly what he was going to do and how he was going to relieve the pain and everything else. And then I went in for the consultation. But he gave me such a good impression from the phone call. When I went there, he actually showed me the x-rays in the MRI. And he showed me where these nerves were being pinched and everything. And he showed me the hardware in my back and everything. And he actually showed me what he was going to do. And he told me that I was going to be awake during the whole operation and I was able to watch it. And at that time, he invited my wife in and said, you can watch it too, which made me relax a lot because, you know, I've had such bad feelings, uh, bad experiences with the other operations. Having my wife in there as an advocate was like 100% more relaxing for me. Brian began his procedures in March 2016. The relief that I got is just unbelievable, but I was just amazed at what he could do. And when I got up off that table, and I figured I was gonna be in the same boat, my wife was shocked because she used to grab my hand at about three and a half feet high, and now she was at four and a half feet high because I could stand up straight. It was like, you know, like a reborn again when I was able to walk off that table and walk out and go for lunch. And it was like, I went in there at 10 o'clock, got operated on. At 12 o'clock, I was walking out on my own. Just totally unbelievable. After a very short time in recovery, him being able to stand up, walk straight, totally straight. I'd never seen him. I haven't seen him in the last 10 years since his original um, fusion that he had, be able to walk like that. I was just flabbergasted. And he, and he looked at me and he said, I don't have any pain. I just bust out crying. It was just, and every surgery that we've had has addressed a different level of the pain that he's had, a different area of the pain, different symptoms, whether the pain, um, certain levels of pain was coming down the front of the leg or the back of the leg. And, um, and to feel him now getting feeling back in his feet, he hasn't had feeling in his feet for 10 years. And now he's back to completing projects in his workshop and enjoying long rides with his better half. Now I go to the store two or three times a week. I wouldn't want to go to Home Depot or Lowell's or anything like that because the pain was so great I couldn't walk through the store. Now I'm back to going picking up uh, materials. I'm working on my shop. I, I take my trike out now. I sold my Harley and uh, I, I bought a VW trike and I've been working on that for the last 10 years. And I replaced the engine and the transmission and the linkage and you know, I'm almost getting it ready for, for me to paint. Every procedure we noticed an, an improvement of what, what, you know, every level that they were at addressed a particular symptom and it, and it resolved that symptom. So I'm just, um, I can't say enough about them. I have my husband back. <laughs>